All right, guys. So the AI coding overlords are already here in form of the OpenAI Codex. So OpenAI Codex is basically a machine learning model, which is a specialized version of their GPT-3 model, <coughs> which was great at uh, predicting text. Um, like you give it a prompt and it will predict what comes after it. And Codex is a coding specialized version uh, of that model. So it will basically generate code. So it will, you will say something and it will generate code. So we will today play around with it a bit and let's talk about it. All right, let's get started. So this is the Codex JavaScript playground. And here we can tell Codex what to do and it will write JavaScript code and it will show it in this window here. So let me give you an example. So let's say um, show zero on the screen. So we'll have to wait for it and it will generate some JavaScript code, which will actually show zero on the screen. And what we want to do is we want to create sort of a counter application, uh, which we can click on to increase this count and uh, click down to, you know, decrease the count. So this, this, this is what we want to create. So let's see, let's try to do this with Codex. So we already got a zero and let's instruct Codex, tell Codex to give, um, to give us some buttons to increase and decrease it. Right. So let's add a plus button. All right. We got our plus button. Let's add a minus button. All right. Cool. <laughs> so on clicking the plus button, increment the number and on clicking the minus button decrement it so this is kind of quite normal natural english and you can see codex can follow through and add these functionalities on our page so let's say this is coming below z z zero right so let's say um, limit decrementing the number at zero let's see it can generate it or not all right it looks like it did look i cannot now decrement it below zero now this is this is so cool i mean we never had anything so good that we can just give it instructions um just give it prompts and it will generate code right now let's let's change the look of it a bit let's see how we can do that so let's say uh, make the buttons red and circular make the buttons borders go away the buttons don't look good uh, right now go away um let's say make the button text color white and give it uniform height and width let's see it can do it or not it actually did uh, you know it gave it a uh, 50 px height and width so let's say um, make the text inside the button bold. I, okay, I, did, I even did a spelling mistake there. So maybe that's why it's wrong. Um, let's try it another way. Yeah, now it's, I think, actually working. Uh, make the pointer sorry, the cursor as a pointer for the buttons, right? So far, so good, actually. Um, let's say take everything and put it in the center of the screen. Ah, uh, this didn't go out quite well let me try it again uh, put everything in the center of the screen let's try this way okay uh, um kind of it uh, succeeded but not well well i wanted it um, around here at the center actually i tried this uh, before recording the video something similar and it worked out actually okay let's say uh, make the text 
make the number look larger. Now notice that I didn't give it any specific um, height and width. I just gave it, um, make it larger. I didn't give it a specific font size and it actually made it larger. Um, let's say um, I want to change the font size now. So make the font robot, not the font size, I mean the font style. So I guess it will work. Yeah, it's Roboto now. And let's say give some margin around the buttons. Give some margin around the buttons. Cool. And again, look, I didn't give it uh, the exact margin. I just said give some margin and it gave kind of natural looking margin. So this is so good. Uh, when it comes to this AI algorithm, this AI model, that it can take these intangibles and put it into solid code. Um, now we actually have this increment and decrement functionality kind of a counter without writing any code. Okay, let's try something a bit more complex. Uh, put the buttons uh, on each side of the number. Let's see if it is able to do it or not. Um, it did, but you know, obviously we don't want it to go absolutely at the right or the left. Um, so obviously this, this model still, uh, is not as good as humans. Um, even though it has seen like all of the code, all of the open source code written out there. Um, so it's, but it's kind of good guys. I mean, look. All this code, even you might say the code is bad, we will write it actually in CSS or whatever. But this is just the first generation and it's already quite good. <laughs> you are giving instructions and it's writing decent code. Well, still someone needs to give the instructions step by step in natural language, which will still need a, well, quote unquote programmer. Uh, but that programmer doesn't, don't need to learn each language specifically. It just needs to have uh, the sense of algorithms or the sense of how the program should work. That's it. it. He doesn't need to know about the tool specifically. I mean, long term, not right now, not right now. The code is, I don't think is production ready in all cases. So it's kind of good. Now let's talk about this model a little bit. So you see the when you're using the API, the API that OpenAI provides, the Codex API, um, the thing is, the way to get a good prompt out of it is actually give it a good uh, text out of it is actually giving it a good prompt. So remember, Codex is a text um, or GPT-3 or Codex, all these uh, the, the models in this family are text prediction models. So you have to give the prompt in such a way that uh, that the code you want comes out naturally. So let's say this is a prompt I've given, create a yellow button um, that says hello world. Now let's just give this prompt in this playground. So this playground is where you can just give it a prompt, give codex or any GPT-3 model a prompt and it will give you the output. Now see, if I say send here, it creates some Python code, I don't know what it does. It's, it's not really what we want. Right. Let's say if we also write in JavaScript, right? Um, so it's it's not creating good quality code. Now you will say, why is it happening in the JavaScript uh, playground? You shown us that it's working so well. So look, Codex because it's a text prediction model. Whatever it will generate will be something that naturally follows the prompt you gave. Right? So it will basic, it's basically a completion engine, right? So I actually took a look into what is the request that that JavaScript playground is sending to codex and I saw the prompt that it sends. Let me find it. Yeah. So it does not just send create a yellow button that says hello world. It actually gives it a full context. Now the code will naturally follow it. The code will naturally be a completion of the prompt that is given. So Codex is not good with instructions. We cannot give it instructions. We have to give it a prompt and we have to embed our instruction somewhere in it so that the code is generate, code it generates is expected. So let's say I submit this one and you can see it's generating the proper code. Uh, it also generates something extra, but I don't know how the 
playground is handling that that i'm yet to explore so you see the prompt that we have given this big prompt is actually setting the context it actually is giving it some examples um so that uh, the the codex uh, engine the codex model can predict what will come after it so the key to get a good outcome of this uh, api if you're using it is to think how you will give the prompt you cannot just give anything at all and expect that it's magic and it will give you a good output it's not magic it's math so you have to give it a good prompt so that it generates code the the, the code that you want let me show you one more example if i have it so let's say i do this convert the following code to python it just adds add subtract multiply because it's because this is how after seeing function add this is how you will generally think the next part of it will go not you i mean a machine may think that the next part will go that after add function there will be subtract function multiply function and divide function right because a prompt is not good enough the prompt we cannot give it like this the prompt is actually like this let me remove this right yeah so the prompt should be like this is the javascript code to add two numbers the python code to for the same is as follows now the python code will follow it naturally and that's why right and you can see the above code is python code so it generates some junk uh, comments too but it actually gave us the right output that we want so if you're using this craft your uh, prompts better to get good output of it. also you know there are few facilities to fine tune these models actually so you can give your own data set your own uh, text prompts and um, the model will learn from it and it will create a fine tuned model so if you have some organization it internal organization code you can actually give that code and those prompts to the uh, to the codex and fine tune it um and that will create a fine tuned model specifically for your organization and that's that's really good that's that's all we want right so codex is also all these models is also cap capable of few short learning now please don't ask me to explain the internals of these uh, deep learning stuff because I, I i really don't know a lot about it now the main question is why is open ai codex useful or which cases it might be useful so the plain and simple use case is code completion right uh, and uh, github copilot is out there doing that um also like the founder of uh, open ai uh, in the lex redman podcast was talking about it that it can be a really good um application in case of digital assistants like uh, cd or uh, google assistant because mm, because look if the applications all the applications take in text commands um then codex can generate those text commands from your natural language so you can talk to codex and it will generate the commands for applications and you can probably control all of your phone from it much in much greater level than we do today um now another major use case that i was thinking is showing your data to codex and asking questions on it um but uh, kind of like sql generation i think but i don't think that use case is quite ready yet in this format because we have to send the data or at least the metadata of the all the tables to uh, codex in each call and i don't think that's uh, quite realistic maybe there will be some ways to fine tune it and uh, um achieve this but i'm i'm really not sure in that case well the main question that ends in everybody's mind that will it take away our jobs the thing is guys frankly no one knows we cannot predict it uh, we cannot predict these things actually um some people say it will some people say we won't i mean i don't know i don't think uh, most people actually does but the the certain thing is that it will be a big change um about in the way we interact with computers and uh, it will change a lot of things and that change will be good or bad for us that only the future will tell because see guys uncertainty has always been the norm of this world predictability is special 